Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on the median nerve. Anatomy The median nerve arises from the brachial plexus. Its fibers originate from C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. The lateral head of the median nerve arises from the lateral cord, which arises from the anterior divisions of the upper and middle trunks. The medial head of the median nerve arises from the medial cord, which arises from the anterior division of the lower trunk. At the axilla, it lies lateral to the axillary artery. At the arm, it enters the arm from the axilla at the inferior margin of the teres major. It descends medially between the biceps brachii and the triceps brachii and it lies lateral to the brachial artery. At the anticubital fossa, it then crosses to descend on its medial side to the anticubital fossa and lies medial to the brachial artery and the biceps brachii tendon. It is protected by the bicipital aponeurosis. At the forearm, it enters the forearm between the two heads of the pronator teres and gives off the anterior interosseous nerve, which supplies the forearm flexor muscles. It causes between the flexor digitorium profundus and superficialis. In the distal forearm, it becomes superficial and travels between the superficial flexors and the flexor carpi radialis. At the wrist, at the palma crease, it lies between the palmaris longus and flexor carpi radialis tendons and enters the hand through the carpal tunnel, deep to the flexor retinaculum, and it then divides into a leash of terminal motor and cutaneous branches. Motor innervation includes the flexor compartment of the forearm, tina and intrinsic hand muscles, cutaneous innervation of the skin over the tina eminence, palma aspect of the thumb, index, middle finger, and the radial half of the ring finger. Indications for median nerve block Anesthesia for surgery on the lateral aspect of the palm and palma surface of the thumb, index and middle fingers, upper tunnel release and palma fasciectomy, analgesia for procedures on the radial palm, post-operative analgesia in median nerve territory in association with GA or more proximal short-acting plexus block, supplementation of incomplete proximal plexus block, Fingers and distal thumb can readily be anesthetized using digital nerve blocks. Median nerve block Follow the general measures as detailed in the brachial plexus blocks. The median nerve can be blocked at the brachial plexus level. It can be blocked at the mid-humeral level. Position the patient supine. Abduct the shoulder to 90 degrees with the elbow flexed. Divide the humerus into thirds, marking the junction of the upper and middle thirds, which is the point of insertion of the deltoid into the humerus. Palpate the brachial artery. The nerve lies above the brachial artery with which it runs parallel to. Angle the needle proximally towards the axilla to the lateral border of the artery. Once flexion of the wrist and fingers, pronation of the wrist occurs. Manipulate the needle until stimulating current is between 0.3 mA and 0.5 mA. After aspiration, 8 to 10 mL of local anesthetic is injected in 4 to 5 mL aliquots. The musculocutaneous nerve can be blocked by directing the needle lateral to the artery, aiming just lateral to the humerus. 8 to 10 mL of local anesthetic is injected when flexion of elbow occurs at 0.3 to 0.5 mA. The ultrasound technique will be similar as an ultrasound-guided axillary block. At the elbow level, to block the median nerve, with the arm supinated, direct a 22 gauge 25 to 50 mm stimulating needle at a point just medial to the brachial artery as it crosses the intercondylar line. Angle cephalate 
with a 45 degree angle to the skin. The nerve should be reached within 1 to 2 cm. Finger flexion at 0.3 to 0.5 mA is sought and 5 mL of LA injected. Ultrasound technique. Using a high frequency linear probe placed at the elbow crease, the median nerve is an oval hyperechoic structure medial to the brachial artery. Use an in-plane approach and surround the nerve with 5 mL of LA. In the mid forearm, the nerve can be traced upwards from its position on the volar surface of the wrist using ultrasound guidance. It lies between the flexor digitorium profundus and the flexor digitorium superficialis. It is usually medial and deep to the radial artery from which it is 1 to 2 cm distant. At the wrist, insert a 25 to 50 mm short bevel needle perpendicularly on the lateral side of the palmaris longus tendon, 2 to 5 cm proximal to the distal flexor crease of the wrist, or medial to the flexor carpi radialis tendon if it is absent, advanced by 5 mm avoiding paresthesia. The nerve is superficial and lies beneath the deep fascia at a depth of 1 cm or less. Nerve stimulation will result in finger flexion and thumb opposition. Inject 3 mL of local anesthetic. Ultrasound guidance. At 5 cm proximal to the wrist crease before the cutaneous branch separates, the median nerve can be blocked with 1 to 3 mL of local anesthetic. Median nerve damage and its clinical signs. It is most vulnerable to trauma at the wrist. Compression of the nerve in the carpal tunnel is the commonest cause. It can be injured in supracondylar humeral fractures and following injury to the distal radius. Symptoms and signs of injury include trauma at the wrist level, paralysis of the tina muscles and causes significant sensory loss in the median nerve territory, atrophic changes and wasting of the tina eminence occurs. For more proximal injury, there will be weak wrist flexion, loss of pronation, loss of flexion of the thumb, index and middle finger. These are my references. Thank you.